we just came by today basically to tell you guys a little bit about like the home inspections for, for homes, for condos, uh, just to, same thing as in the US that we do, uh, licensed contracts over there and everything, so, but same thing, if you guys have been there, seen the you know process over there, it's gonna be the same thing. Come in, check the home, check electrical, check plumbing, make sure everything's in working condition. Nothing got patched up to where somebody's not gonna be able to tell. And then in a month or two, things start falling apart. You know, there's, uh, I I've been in this business for over 20 years, and we've seen the good side of it, you know, where people take care of their homes, make sure they, they do everything properly, wiring and everything, and then we have the stuff that nobody takes care of the home for 20 years, they decide to sell it, they pay some guy to come in and patch things up. This outlet doesn't work, it's okay. Let's get some uh, primer, spray paint the, the face of it, it looks brand new. And behind of it, it's falling apart, full of roaches, or who knows what the hell is back there. Uh, I, I've seen it all. I, I, unfortunately, back in my day, I'd done it all. So <laughs> that was one of, the, the, one of the things that I used to do. Somebody used to tell me, especially real estate agents, hey, we just want to get this on the market. We want to get it rolling fast. Homeowner doesn't want to spend any money. Make it look nice. It's like, okay, bondo on wood, you know, paint it, make it look like it's good, but you, you touch it, it looks solid. You touch the back of it, it's termites, it's falling apart. And, and you're like, okay, well, it passed inspection. It passed one phase of inspection, but it didn't pass the other one. So what we do is try to make sure that we look at both sides. If you're gonna sell, hey, this is what somebody's gonna be looking at. Underneath the sinks, make sure you got no water leaks. Electrical, make sure you're, you know, everything's current, everything's grounded. But it's ridiculous because you have just wires coming through left and right, and then you have wires bunched up, I don't know why they do it, bunched up in one outlet, feeding a whole room with no ground. So the minute somebody touches something wrong or there's a surge, like there is so many here, you get a surge, all of a sudden you blow up your TV, you blow up your fridge, and you're going, what the hell happened? It's a brand new unit, I just bought it, I just spent hundreds of thousands on this, why am I dealing with electrical issues? So that's one of the things we, we like to catch, we like to find, uh, so that people feel more comfortable. You know, if you bought the unit within a month, you shouldn't have these issues. You know, somebody comes in and wrecks the place, well, you know, for, for the sellers, we can have the inspection report saying, hey, we checked it, this was not like this. We did something, we checked it, all this was there properly, and we take pictures for everything. So everything has a picture, you know, if we open an outlet, because I don't know if you guys have dealt with it, uh, you flip a switch and nothing happens. And you're going like this, and you're like looking for lights to turn on and off and nothing happens. You open it up, it's got live wires. And there's some that they just put them on because it was cheaper just to put a switch than a cover. So they just put a switch and you're like, oh, it doesn't, nothing's connected, that's fine. But when it's live, you turn it on and nothing happens, that power is going somewhere. So if it's touching another wire, if it's touching the ground or touches water, or it's just hanging out there, that's gonna cause a problem. So we try to find that out and be like, hey, we have this issue with the electrical. Uh, we, we need to further inspect it or actually repair it so that nobody has the same issue. Uh, there's not many garbage disposals here, but same thing, anytime you have water within four feet of electrical, you should have a GFI. I've seen so many places don't, don't have them, just don't have them. They just don't, don't use them. The GFI is like a mini breaker. So if you're washing your hands in the sinks right here and you splash and it goes in and it makes a short circuit, it'll turn off immediately. It'll protect the rest of the house, done without even going to the breaker box, right there, solved. If you don't have that, it goes to the breaker box, and if the breaker box is faulty, it's gonna fry that too. So all of a sudden, boom, all gone in 10 seconds. Go ahead. Um, do you do thermal imaging inspection? We do. You do. Okay. Uh, I actually brought the camera with me, so I was gonna show you guys, but the battery's kinda dead. <laughs> we used it uh, last night, so um, there's some images here that I'll show you, especially here with block yeah. uh, and tile and everything, it's a big plus. So this right here is like you guys can see the different colors, right? The camera on the left is what you see on the screen. 
and behind it up there, the white, that's the wall. So if we're looking at this wall right here, let's say I'm just sticking it up like this, that's going to show me that where there's a leak. Even though the paint and the block is not showing it, in between, I can see it. So I'll be able to tell, it's like, oh, look, here it comes from this top corner and is running down here. It might be close to that door, and you think it's the seal, but it's actually a corner from the roof bringing the water down. You don't have to break into the wall to expose mm -hmm. it in the areas. You don't have to start chipping here, chip, 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 chip. You find it up here. And then once you do the repair, you come back, you check it, and you can see definitely if it's drying out, whether it's not. Same thing on the tile on the floor. If you have plumbing underground, under the concrete and everything that comes through, you'll see this. <coughs> concrete absorbs the moisture. We'll be able to find it with the temperature right there. No more having to chip from the main line all the way to see where the hell it broke. It broke right here. Look, this is the center. Done. Cut that open, chip it up, put a new piece in, solve it, or reroute it. You know, a lot of people at that point decide, hey, you know what, I don't want to have the same issue later. Uh, who knows who's available? Let's just change it now. So if I understand correctly, you give the report with pictures and also an estimate of fixing whatever issues you find that you can fix? Yes. Yes. Okay. We'll give you an estimated cost that way. You know, if you're buying or selling, you say, hey, it's going to cost this much in repairs. What we have now, you guys do your thing with the numbers. That's, that's, you, that's guys. you guys. From a selling perspective, after you get sub fixed, would you provide a certificate of a pre-inspection? We do. We do, we, we, we do we provide a certificate, certificate saying, hey, we inspected this, this at this, at this point, point in time. time because, because like you guys know, it. We change at this point in time, time, this is working properly, properly this, this is working this, this is working like that. And how long do you certify that for? It varies. Okay. We can give certain warranties or guarantees and certain things, but it varies so much because water pressure here is crazy. You know, so if somebody doesn't have water pressure regulator, we're regulating the house at 60 or 80, then we really can't do much because the minute something surges to 120, there goes that. And we certified it, but yeah, we didn't search for that pressure. Uh, so it, it kind of varies. We can guarantee that this is working conditions at this point in time. A warranty on something like that is really hard to warranty further. What's your turnaround uh, for for me to get an inspection from you, how long does it take, and then to get the report back? Uh, it's usually about a week. A week to schedule. Uh, a week to schedule, and then once you once you once we do the inspection? do the inspection, it takes about two days. Okay. For to you get, get a report. Yeah, to get a report, pictures, and everything says okay, this is what we got. Okay. So being here doing doing this as long as I've been doing it, I realized one of our biggest problems is is roofs because we don't get a lot of rain. And so we go and we sell the property, and then when the rain shows up, all of a sudden there's all these problems. But we don't, the clients don't know that for months and months and months until, until the actual rain comes. Right? And, and, and that's, yes, exactly. Well, that's one of the biggest things. Here, a lot of people understand, or have a belief that clay tiles are lifetime. They're forever, and they're not. They're clay. So the sun, the sand, a little bit of water we do get starts wearing them down. You see one of those pictures there? They just start kind of sliding off. But if you go up and step on them, and they're 15 years old, there's a way you can step on them if they're still good. If you touch it, or you pick it up, and you just put your finger through it, it's no good. So you inspect the roofs? Because yes. I know that other home inspectors here, they'll do the inspections, but for some reason, they avoid the roofs. Well, it'd be for the same reason. So on the right side, you, you see a flat roof. Right. This is where they tar it in, they heat it up, they torch it, boom. It, it, it marries to the, the other part. If you have this little gap underneath there, moisture will get in. And you're going to try to find it, and you're not going to be able to. It's hard to find these things with, with these. It can be done, just takes a while. But a lot of people put clay tiles over that, thinking that's going to solve the problem. And it does for a while. But like I said, clay tiles start breaking down. They start wearing out. It's clay. It's not 100% concrete, polyurethane, or anything like that. It's clay. Just like you go out and get a clay pot, your grandma used it for 10 years and then you pick it up, it falls apart. That's because it's used. It's beat to hell. She used it. Same thing with this, these, these clay tiles. When we get up there, we'll be able to tell you, your roof is more than 15 years old, you need to replace it. So 
we'll take same thing, we'll take pictures, we'll take samples. If we can look underneath, we'll look underneath. If not, that's something that we'll give you an estimate for is like, it's gonna cost you this much to repair the roof because it's you know worn out beyond <coughs> its you know repairable condition. 15 years is the max you should really do on clay tiles. This is so important because really it, it'll help you from both sides of the transaction. If you're selling the property and you have an inspection and the roof's good, you can go, hey, look it. We've got, we've got a certification that this stuff on the house is working good. Because if you're going to match property to property, they might not be looking at some of these things at another property that might be cheaper or they might be thinking they're getting a better deal at. And they also, so that would be on the buyer side. But on the seller side too, you could get something certified with the listing and put it up with the listing and go look at, we've already done a home inspection. So that way, when you're going to come and look and, and show the property, you can provide a home inspection to the potential buyers. And once again, you're gonna create a more of a trust and, and, and a situation where people are gonna feel more comfortable what they're gonna be buying into. But also, you can also put the doubt into their minds for the places that don't have the home inspection, all right? That they're not sure what you're buying because if you're competing with other properties, you might want to go, hey, look it, you don't really know what you're getting over there. You know what you're getting over here and everything's being disclosed properly and we love disclosures. One of the other things that I want to bring up that we have a big problem with here is mold or by the ocean. People paint over the mold, right? And then they sell it and then summer comes and then the mold all comes out. How do we overcome that? that? That's one of the things that thermal imaging will help. It'll help with the mold. Because you can see how much moisture you're holding in walls. Okay. So if you're lacking venting, if all you got to do is punch a hole in the, in the creek and put a fan and pull there, that might just solve everything. Okay. So mold can be fixed? Mold could be fixed. Okay. Do you, mold, right. do, you do mold tests? Yes, we do mold tests. So uh, on block and concrete, it's the repair is a little bit more intense than it obviously with drywall. Drywall, you go in, you cut it out and replace it. Block, you can't cut it out, but you can send down, treat, treat and repair. How do you identify where it is if they paint it over it? Most of, most of the time with the thermal, you'll be able to see it and find it. You can find it, so it'll pick it up on the thermal? It, and, and it won't pick up the mold, right. but it'll pick up, it'll pick water, up the, the moisture. Mold doesn't grow unless there's moisture. Okay. So if you have mold in that corner right there, if you had mold today, it, it gets dry. Nobody does anything, but the windows are open and it gets dry. The summer comes in and it gets dry. You won't be able to see it again. Okay. That's it. But if it stays closed, moisture outside, moisture inside, it it's just going to stay there. It's going to either, and you can find it with that temperature. Okay. That's one of the things that the variance in temperature that you guys see there as exactly what you're looking for. Okay. On the roof lines, you can see like if there's moisture, it's like, okay, well, the roof is leaking. Okay, fine. You can see it run down. You can see it on the floor. Everything has a certain base temperature. So when you put the camera on, you can find like spots of like, okay, why are we getting moisture here? Why is it cold? Might be the windows cracking. That's why the temperature on that block right there is colder. Close the window. Problem solved. Okay. So there's there's a lot of small stuff and there's a lot of big stuff that we can find. Okay. All right. So and you gave us the prices for the condos. How, how does your how does your prices work? So for condos, it's 150 for home inspections, uh, it's 300. Okay. Homes are different because obviously more areas, condos, you're, you're pretty much blocked in and all there's uh, minimum stuff that you can look at. Okay. Uh, you can't really pop into walls, you know, without bothering the neighbors or something like that. But you obviously, you do have to do the inspection. And that's a complete home. home inspection. They get, yes. they get everything with Roof, them. plumbing, electrical. Just going back to your mold test though. Do you fog the whole house, the whole condo, if you were to enclose it, or do you do? That's work? that. See, that's a repair that becomes like, what do you, what does the homeowner or what does the seller want to do? Mm -hmm. What kind of repairs do they want to do? No, not just for the mold inspection. So for the mold inspection, you, you do just the area. You do, so you do just per per room. Per room. Okay. Yeah. So we'll have to identify basically which room we feel there's mold, there's humidity yeah. in. Yeah. And then go and do that. What would your cost be for the whole place? It, it really depends on the square footage. If okay. you're going to do all That's the square fair. footage, uh, how much, how many fans or what you're going to put in there to dry out. Okay. What's, uh, the, what's the cost for the mold inspection? If we're going through just the regular inspection, we that's find the thermal imaging, right? Because yeah. you're doing the thermal imaging. Yeah, we're doing the thermal okay. imaging in, in there. So that's pretty much in there. So yeah. your mold test is off the thermal imaging or you actually run it to a lab? You fog the room and you send that to a lab. To the, so with with the mold, if we find something that looks like mold spores or something like that, right. then we will. And then that's an added separate cost. Yeah, because there's 
So there's le- there's certain safe levels of humidity, right? Exactly. It's, it's really coming back to your spore count that you have. Exactly. Over. So what if we just want to pre-certify to say there's no mold here? If you don't have, if that's okay. If you need yeah, to come it, back to a minute, I just want to understand how we 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 do all that stuff. We haven't had one to where we actually had to send it to a lab. I believe for the lab, I think it was like 60, 80 bucks. And then they have it turned around like in two days. Okay. Uh, the last one was like months ago. Um, it's not that hard. It's not that bad. Yeah. It's just one of the, another step. Yeah. So if we do that, then that becomes an added cost. But at that point, we would say, hey, uh, Hector, whatever. Uh, we, we have, <laughs> Hector, we have this issue right here. Do you guys want to look further? Yeah. If your seller, if it's, it's a seller, your seller says, you know what? I just want to patch it. I don't care. I don't know. That, that's on you guys. We give you the option if you guys make the decision on what you guys want to do. Do you do termite treatment? We do. Do you but cover most of, the whole house or just... No, no, no. We just do like the sections. We won't do a whole tent or anything like that. So we just kind of inject the beams? Well, well, most of the time we'll replace it. And then if there's a small part of another one, we will cut and then inject. Okay. So with copper sulfate. That, and that killed pretty much the termite. Because if you have termites down here, most of what I've seen is just, they're already gone. If you find it, it's because they already ate whatever they were eating, you know, a fascia, the beam or anything. And, and most of the time you just have to replace it. So with the inspection, we'll tell you all about it. We'll give you an estimated, you know, repair cost. Seller decides or buyer decides they want to do it once they purchase or before they sell, then we're more than happy to do the repairs. So, but that gives you guys a base price of like, hey, this is what we have. This home is going to sell for this much, but it needs this much repair. This one's selling for this much. It doesn't need repair. We have guarantees of what it looks like. Everything's working properly. That should help you guys out. You know, you guys, for somebody spending 100000 200000 300000 400000 dollars for a property, 150000 to $300 is nothing. is nothing <laughs> to get a home inspection. I would, you know, for you guys that are representing your buyers and your sellers, it's good to to have some, to, to encourage them to um, to do this. Okay, so the sellers you might want to have them do it to list the property. Go ahead, let's get a home inspection so that way everyone knows what's going on with the house. And especially if they know that house is in great condition, it could be a great selling point to have this home to go look at what good condition our home is in, right? Or if it's not in good condition. That way you're not having them come back to you and negotiate that price down because they found out later on that there's these problems. So by you disclosing stuff up front, you're going to have a better ability to negotiate and you're going to be in a better position to negotiate by disclosing the things up front rather than having those come up during the during the closing process. I think that you'll have happier clients. You'll get more referrals because you're going to be able to tell people that people will be, have a better understanding of what they're buying and there's going to be no surprises and we don't like surprises. We don't like them. The clients don't like them. Nobody wants to be surprised. They just want to know what are they going to get for their money so that they can make the smart uh, choices with their money and buy what they and buy what they believe they're getting. Anything else you'd like to share with them? Uh, we dealt with some customers more than anything that wanted to come down here, buy a home, have the idea of beachfront property, but they don't want to spend any money. A lot of things that we have had to do is tell them, this is going to cost so much in repairs versus because we, we can build homes. So versus buying the lot and building a new home. And there's some stuff with <laughs> plumbing down here is really ridiculous. So <laughs> I don't know if you guys can tell, but uh, on the left side, there's copper with galvanized. That's a huge no-no. I mean, just huge. Uh, Do you plex? Yes. Okay. That's good. Yes. Um, you know, I don't know if you guys seen it, but the duct tape on uh, P traps and and especially on galvanized pipes. I don't know why they love this stuff. They they love to put tape on galvanized pipe. Well, it's cheap, and a lot of people can't really take off what's already rusted on there. And instead of having a whole p- put a new piece and cut it and do it, they tape it up. And, and, you, guys, and you guys, you know, in the U.S., there is, there is a law that if you don't disclose the problems, that the that the owner, the seller, is liable. 
um, they can go, go, they can go back and be sued. Over here, I'm over sure, here, I'm sure there are similar laws, laws but how easy, how easy is, is it if, uh, if, if, if a foreigner sells a property and then leaves the country? How are you going to go, after, gonna go after, after them and go get that money? It's not going to be as easy as it would be in the U.S. So having this all found out and disclosed up front and figuring out what all it is so it can be handled prior to the closing is the best solution for everybody involved. It should be part of the your process. Yes, I agree. Survive. I agree. It, it, it just kind of it, it covers it everybody. But you should recommend it all the way Exactly. And that's what we try to do. It's like somebody makes a choice. They don't want to do repairs and stuff. That's obviously up to them. Or if they want to sell it as is, you know, that's fine. But that covers you guys from saying, hey, we told you so. Yes, exactly. We said it. Here it is. There's pictures. And now, you know, it's, it's not on us. So... Uh, these are some of the foundation issues we found. Obviously, you guys have seen the, the ones on, on the doors. That's very visible. The one on the very right, you see the block opened up like that? Mm -hmm. This is something that we found. Settlement? Uh, no, it was in one of the rooms. But we found this one on one room that didn't get touched up. This one, they try to cover it up. And on the other ones, you see how thick that is? That big gap? Yeah. Well, they filled it with mortar, okay? They filled it so you couldn't see it, and then they just left it like that. The other ones they painted. So if somebody's not really looking for something like that, you're gonna look at it and be like, oh, it looks good, right? But you can find it because you see the mortar get wider and wider. So that's one way to f of finding that people try to repair something that's damaged. Down here, it's a big thing because the foundations down here move a lot. And when you have block that moves like that, you really can't bring it back together. Do you guys build with uh, steel? We build with uh, block, we build with steel, and we build with wood. Okay. So. What do you think is the best option over here? Best option here, you can do block as long as your foundation is good. As long as you put the time in to get your foundation right, your block is great. It's fireproof, it's, uh, it's quick, inexpensive, and it'll last forever. But if you don't have the right foundation, it's gonna fall apart on you before you even finish. And we really appreciate you coming to meet with us. Oh, and no I mean, anytime. The more business we send you, the happier clients we're gonna have. Well, anytime you guys have my contact, even if you have a question about something, uh, you know, you might be looking at something and say, hey Pete, I, I'm gonna send you a picture, tell me what you think, more than happy to answer that. Okay, so that's our, what I call the rat nest on the left. All the wiring's just coming together. Yeah, it's just ridiculous. The rat. the rat and the actual electrical panel. But the one on the right hand side is the most disturbing. <laughs> because <The> water. <laughs> because one of these guys was there first. <laughs> he, he, either the plumber or the electrician. Right. <laughs> and somebody made the conscious decision to be like, I'm gonna put this right next to this. Yeah. So uh, it's oh, disturbing yeah, it that somebody did that. But hey, you guys seen it. It happens a lot. And that's one of the things that, you know, sometimes you'll find this like in the back corner of a house where people don't even look. There's a bush growing behind it. And you're like, why the hell? Because that water keeps dripping. Uh, and it's right next to the electrical. So th those are issues that are, are just dumbfounded to me. Why would somebody do it? Like I said, somebody came first and said, yes, right here. And, you know, Thank like you. I said, Thank you. you guys have a contest, just let us know. Thank you. Thank you for watching our video. If you're planning on buying real estate in the Rosary Beach area, make sure to give us a call. Have a great day, everybody.